However, if we've got parachute cord, we can easily make one. Let's see how this is done. This is nylon parachute cord and it's made up of many strands, each one very strong. We can separate these easily just by pulling them out. Now it's a good habit to make your boot laces of parachute cord. Double up your strand and we use a knot called the plastic knot. It goes over once, over twice and goes through itself and then we pull it tight. We want to aim for an inch and a half between knots so we space them out on the top cord, pull them together and draw them tight. To show you the principle, I'll just do three. Then once we've got the vertical ones hanging, okay, we take the inside pair and we tie them with a simple overhand knot. What we want to try and do is get about inch and a half between knots then we take the next pair overhand knot the next pair and now you can see the net being formed now this seems like a lot of work but remember we might have injured people or old people with us and this is good therapy for them and it makes them feel useful and add into the contribution in a survival situation now once this is done, this is how we put it in the water. I've securely anchored one end to the bank and you must make sure it's real tight because we're going to catch a lot of fish this way. I then carefully pick the net up and I'm going to walk around the edge of the bay paying the net out as I go. When I reach the other side, I securely anchor this end to the bank. I must ensure the net is straight down in the water that way we're going to catch lots of fish. Okay, the net is not tangled. I'll let it sink to the bottom there. And I'm going to securely anchor it to this root here. Making sure it's real tight. I've checked the net to make sure it's straight down in the water. If we leave this now, I'm sure we're going to catch a lot of fish. It's easy to make a spear and this is good for night fishing. If you've got a flashlight you shine it on the surface of the water and this will attract fish. Then they can be speared. You can also take the beta light from your survival tin, place this in shallow water and again fish will be attracted and can be speared. If the moon is out any shiny object like aluminum foil will also attract fish. Now the spear is easily made. Just take a fork stick add a third prong and sharpen each prong and fire harden them. This makes them more efficient. Make sure it is strongly constructed. You know I'd like to see again how you constructed that fish net. Why don't you show me the knot you used using this larger line so our audience can see. I'll just hold this out here. Okay Steve we double our line over and it goes around once around twice and then we catch the two ends through the middle pull them all the way through tighten it up there's your plastic knot really useful knot okay fishing is okay if we're by water but what if we're not we then got to go to game now pound for pound you can't beat meat and we must have protein for tissue regrowth so if we cut ourselves or got any injury we must have protein to heal ourselves so now, unlike fish, we've got a certain amount of skill to learn, we've got to mask our scent when we lay our snares, and also we've got to recognize the game trail. How are we going to catch this game? Steve, we use a snare, and for small animals, we catch them by the neck. This is called a strangle. To make it more efficient, we bend down a twitch, make a mechanism, so when the animal goes in, it takes it up in the air, so now we've got a dangle. For larger animals, we can drop a rock on them. This is a mangle, and in the case of the fishing net, the fish swim into it, it's called a tangle. So we use mangle, dangle, tangle and strangle. And what if we don't have any snares in our survival kit? They're very easy to make and easily improvised. We can use our bootlaces, string, wire and all we've got to make is a running noose. Okay, 
Let's go back out in the field and see how snares are used. What we're going to use is a simple snare. We take the wire from a survival tin and we make a running noose. Size of this depends on the type of game we're going to snare. Now rules for snares is a small game, a fist wide, four fingers high and securely anchored to the game trail. The hardest thing is to recognize the game trail and find out what sort of game is in your area. Down here I've got a snare set. Here's the game trail and here's the snare set. We must camouflage a scent from the snare before using it. The best way of doing this is smoking it over the fire. What we've got here is a snare, a fist wide, four fingers high, securely anchored and we use small sticks to keep the noose apart. This traps from either direction. Further along the game trail, I've got some more traps set. Now to make the snare more efficient, we incorporate it using spring tension and the snare is set exactly as before but attached to a mechanism. To set the snare, we engage the toggle, keeping the head out of the way and arranging the snare on the game trail. Fist wide, four fingers eye, attached now to the mechanism. So now when the animal comes into the snare, it releases and the animal flies up into the air. For larger game, we need a different mechanism. Now on the game trail, we've got a platform trap. Again, using spring tension, we have the trigger mechanism and this locks under the top bar, which is held in place on the game trail by two forked sticks. The bottom bar prevents this trigger bar from flying upwards. Now on the bottom bar, we build a platform And on this, we spread some grass. And now we use a foot snare. This can be nice and big. So now when the animal treads on the snare, it releases a mechanism. Down it goes, flies up, taking the animal by the leg. This is a variation of the platform trap. And we still use the same mechanism. But now, what stops the trigger bar from flying upwards is this small twig that is anchored at one end by a small stake and it's restraining the trigger bar from flying upwards. There's a small stake this end. We now, across the game trail, put a foot snare. It's laid down. The animal comes along and it steads on this bar. Down it goes and up flies the animal. And finally, we have a leg break snare. Now the traps we've got set have been working for us, we've got something to bait the snares with, making life easier. In this case, we've got the trigger bar, it goes underneath here, and is locked in position by the bait bar. This restrains it from going forward, and underneath the bait, we put the leg noose, so when the animal comes to feed, he stands here, he takes the bait, causes it to release, and securely anchoring the animal by the leg. Lofty, some of those traps look pretty dangerous. You wouldn't want one of your party to walk into one, would you? No, you surely wouldn't. Remember, they are for survival only. Never set them, if you want to practice these mechanisms, on a place where humans or domestic animals could be snared. They are purely for survival only. Okay, good safety tip. Now, our gill nets have been in the stream for a while now. Let's go back and see how they did. Now we've had plenty of plants, but I'm really looking forward to some protein. For long-term survival, we must have protein. Let's hope the net provides. Yes, we've got a good snack in the net. Once one fish has swam in, leave the net because they attract others. Now we must check the net at first light, noon and last light. Night lines are devastating. We've got a few fish on here. Now they don't look very big, but remember, small fish, if you get enough of them, they are a mill. You can also use a real small fish to catch larger fish. A sprat to catch a mackerel. Now this is an ideal way of fishing because it leaves you free to do other things in the camp, more essential camp duties. And these are working for you all the time. Leave them unattended. Fish are high on a nutritional ladder coming above insects. Remember, night lines and gill nets, they're lethal. If there's fish in the water, they will take them. Now once we've got the fish, we've got to prepare it. This is how we do it. 
This is the anal orifice 